Good day, everyone. This is Sky with SmartPokerStudy.com, and I'm here with a Poker Tracker 4 video on doing some VPIP research through your database. VPIP is the most powerful stat there is, as it's calculated in every hand played, so it's a great indication of how active a player is and what range of hands they choose to play. VPIP is an acronym for Voluntarily Put Money in the Pot, and it's calculated as the number of times a player put money in the pot divided by the total of number of hands total number of hands dealt to them minus the number of walks they receive and a walk is when you're in the big blind and everyone folds around to you and you take the pot uh, without having to put in a raise at all and uh, VPIP is how often on average a player chooses to play a hand throughout all positions so the higher the percentage uh, the more hands they play if you aren't playing enough hands you become predictably nitty while playing too many hands gives you very weak ranges on each street in relations to your in your relation to your opponent's range so let's go ahead and do some research through my own database here um, the first thing you want to do is filter for the game stakes and time frame you want to research now I'm looking at August 3rd which is the most recent date that I have over a thousand hands on because I want to look at a pretty good sample size um, there's there's days where I play only 400 to 600 hands so I, I always like to look at over a thousand uh, hand days when doing my research so the first thing you see I'm on the stats tab and I group or the summary report and I group it by position there's other ones to cover here and I will go over table session uh, grouping in a moment but first under the position so the various positions are laid out here and my VPIP is in this column. Overall on this day, I played a 1410, which is a little nitty. It's a tight aggressive play, but I want to up that. I want to increase my overall VPIP to about uh, 17 to 18% right around there in PFR, which I'll cover in a later video, but I want that to be 14 to 15 in that range. So I need to get more active, probably need to add some more suited aces, suited connectors, suited two gappers, and uh, maybe some pretty good suited kings to my ranges, my opening ranges and my three bet ranges. Um, anyway, so VPIP here, you can see voluntarily put money in the pot. It increases as I get later in position, which is a good sign. It means I'm positionally aware, know what I'm doing there. To dive further into these, you can look at all the hands played by position here. So in the early position, these are all the different whole cards I was dealt right here. But you can see, of course, I've folded a ton of different hands in early position. So seeing all these hands broken down, uh, altogether I played 165 hands. Let's take a look at the most recent 500 so all 165 hands are now listed here and that's just too many to look through what you know there's no need for me to look through five three off or deuce three off where I just open folded preflop let's do a little bit of filtering to filter for VPIP the first thing you want to do is hand details player is hero right here and then you go to actions and opportunities preflop voluntarily put money in the pot right there add that to filter now this simply says every hand that you're dealt where you put more money in you might have uh, open limped and then folded you might have raised you might have three bet pre-flop whatever the case is if you put any voluntarily money if you voluntarily put any money in the pot those hands will now, now pop up um, limping in the small blind calling a raise out of the big blind whatever the case may be if you haven't already saved this as a quick filter, you want to do that. I have, so we'll just do save and apply filters here. Now you can see, let's take a look at the button right here. In the button, I VPIPed uh, or voluntarily played 22 different hands, so they're all listed here. We could take a look at the whole cards I chose to play on the button. Now, of course, aces, ace king, ace queen, can't throw those away, ace 10. I plays an ace 8 over one limper ahead of me. Ace five off suit in an unopened pot, of course. Ace three in an unopened pot. So you can see the strength of the hands. The weakest hand that I played might be king ten suited. Yeah, yeah, king ten suited is the weakest hand that I played um, versus one raiser. Looks like I re-raised. I three bet this guy. Let's take a look at this hand real quick. So I'm on the button going through the hand here. Now the villain is 3621. His raise first in in early position is 26%. So he's pretty active early position and of course 
he seems positionally aware, gets more active, but he's just a really uh, loose, aggressive guy at a 3621. So I chose to 3-bet him here uh, just to get active. He folds 89% of the time. He's so active pre and opening with so many weakish hands, he folds to a lot of 3-bets, 89%. So my goal was just to take it down with a 3-bet steal with the hand that post-fought plays pretty well, King-10 suited. And I get a call. And of course I got the flush draw with one over card and the backdoor straight draw with the King-10 queen. He checks and I make a C-bet. And you can see he folds half of the time to C-bets right here, uh, 7 out of 15, uh, you know, practically half of the time. So it's a good spot to see because I've got so much equity and there are lots of turn cards that I can fire again on. Of course, I can fire on a king. I can fire on a queen because this guy at 47% is calling a lot of draw. 47% fold to see bet is calling a lot of draws. And then he just folds to it and I take down a pot, a nice three bet pot right there with the king 10 suited. Um, yes, yeah, so when looking at VPIP, and of course, VPIP, now that we've filtered it, is 100% across the board. But you can look at it by position and see the hands that you chose to play. So in early position, what did I choose to play here? Uh, oh, wait, that's what we were just, yep, king, uh, nine, sevens, jacks. It looks like I play all pocket pairs, play down to pocket sixes. And the worst, ace four suited in an unopened pot uh, because I was in early position. It might have been even a four-handed. Let's take a look at that real quick. The worst. Oh, it wasn't. Full six players. So I opened and took it down. Maybe, yeah, I think one of the reasons why is because this guy folds so much to C-bets. This guy does as well. I just figured, hey, ace four suited, open it here, C-bet the flop, and probably take it down. We have a couple other high fold to C-betters here. Actually, across the board, only 41 hands on this guy. But these two blinds are pretty good blinds to try to steal from, even from early position. And I have a hand that plays well post-flop. And I know I can easily ditch it if I face a ton of action with such a weak ace. Um, and I can continue on a lot of different boards with gut shots or flush draws. So, let's see here. Let's go to on the big blind here. Now you can see I played 31 hands and a lot of these my own pre-flop action within these hands I make a lot of calls in the big blinds because players are just min raising or maybe you know yeah they're just they're just min raising so I'm calling with a lot of suited connectors a lot of different hands I like to see flops with and try to hit you can see most of the hands that I play when I'm calling are either big Offsuit cards, uh, a lot of suited cards, not really so strong. I re-raise here, of course, with pocket kings, but none of my calls are actually going to be the strongest of hands. Ace queen suited is probably an ace king. Yeah, they're the strongest hands that I could just call, depending on who raised it pre-flop. Ace queen suited right here. So some of your VPIP research revolves around what pre-flop action you took, what pre-flop action you were facing, along with what hands. And you can go through your different um, different positions and view what hands you played and how you played them. You can sort it, of course, by money one. Looks like I won a pretty good pot with a jack-10 off. Nice. And I just called pre, of course. Jack-10 is the kind of hand I don't want to fold, especially jack-10 suited when I'm in the blinds, you know. And my biggest losing hand was 10 bucks on an 8-7. Oh, man, I hit a flush. And uh, I guess the guy probably overflushed me, or maybe he had a full house. Let's take a look at this hand real quick. In the BB, now this guy raises first in, in early position, 6%. Well, he could be raising anywhere. That's like jacks are better. Uh, possibly, yeah, probably like jacks are better and ace queen. Uh, maybe even ace jack, depending on what he feels like doing. Come on. And I, I called, of course, with the hand, with the kind of hand that can crack a big hand, 7-8 suited. And I flop a pair plus a gut shot straight flush draw. Uh, there's no way I'm getting away from this, at least on the flop and turn. If I whiff on the river, then I can get away. I do a little check action. He makes a bet of about two-thirds pot. Uh, I'm sorry, three-quarter pot right there. And I give a check raise, of course, showing some strength. And he calls. Now I hit my flush. Bet two bucks, four dollar. Oh, re-raise. Now a min-raise like that is a warning sign. 
I do have a flush, and I do have a redraw out of the straight flush now. Um, I can't get away for just two more dollars there. I only need 18% equity, and I think quite often he could, with his open pre and with his uh, laggy stats, he could have a set that he's uh, trying to get value out of me from, thinking that I don't have a flush. He could be even doing two pair like a 9-7. I doubt he'd open a 7-5, but possibly a 9-7 suited could have opened in preflop. Um, or he just hit his deuce, pair of deuce, uh, set of deuces on the turn, or he flopped a set that he just kind of bet and then slow played it to get more action out of me. And then I raise all in, of course, because I figure he has something worth calling. Maybe he even just has an ace of hearts with a nine, like ace nine heart spade kind of a hand. And then he calls, of course, and we get a four. So the only thing that can beat me now is a higher flush. And that's what he's got with a jack queen. So he had two over cards on the flop with the flush draw. Um, of course, he's going to bet call there. You can't bet fold or even check behind. You've got to continue. So the hand kind of played itself there because I chose to play a suited connector. It's just the way it worked out. It's too bad he had hearts. All right, so that's looking at this report by position here. Let's go ahead and just clear the filter. So we're back to our by positions. Let's take a look at table session. Now, one of the ways I like to review my hand histories is, is, is also by table. So you can see some of these tables I played, 94, 101 hands, 88 hands. This was an overall losing table for myself. And this right here was an overall winning table, over 89 hands. I won $10.67, or about one buy-in or so, uh, which is pretty good. So you can view these, you can view all your hands by table to see how you played on the table. Now, on this particular table, I played 89 hands. I can just do a review, replay all hands in report, and go through them one by one uh, to see how I played. Or, because we are focusing on VPIP, I could do my stat VPIP filter right here. It's the same one as we did earlier. I just have it saved. And then now, all my different table sessions are broken down, but it looks like in that winning session where I played 89 hands, only 14 of those hands I chose to play. Um, you know, when I wasn't in the big blind and got to see a free flop. So 14 hands I played in this session, this winning session here. All my whole cards are laid out for me that I chose to play and my pre the preflop action that I took with those hands. And then uh, one way to go through it is to replay all the hands in this report. And then I can see, hey, what did I do with this king five offsuit? How did I choose to play that? Well, it was a heads up portion. I opened, he called, top pair weak kicker. So, uh, this guy, C bets 44% of the time. So he's almost, he's a bit C bet. I'm sorry, he's a bit flop honest, um, which is the term I got from Alex Fitzgerald. Uh, He's, he's a bit flop honest here, so he tends to bet when he hits a flop or hits a good draw. So he could have a queen or a jack, uh, even a pair w along with a flush draw. I'm sorry, with a gut shot draw, something like that. Queen 10, of course. Now, if I look to the fold to see bet stat, he donks 17% of the time, which is not really all that high. You hit a flop... Um, 33% of the time, you hit some part of the flop, whether it's a small pair or some kind of a draw, 33% of the time. So most likely, he has a 10 himself with a draw, possibly a king with a better kicker, because a five's not all that good. So he bets, and I choose to call, because just want to pot control. I've got top pair. I'm not going to give this up exactly. Checks, and now I bet, because that's showing just a bit of a sign of weakness. That's one of the benefits of playing in position here. So top pair, weak kicker, but I bet... And then he just folds and takes it down. So he's capable of donking. We could put a little note on this guy. Capable of a donk bluff on king 10, 9. And check, fold, turn. There we go. Nice little note we took on a player, so we can help us battle him in the future. So that is how you would research hands, and, and there's plenty of other ways to look at hands, but that's one of them. You could also look at your pre-flop actions here. You could see I did some re-raising uh, on this particular table, did some re-raising, or one re-raising, a few raises with some decent hands here, and I did some calling out of the big blind and the small blind here. 
uh, big blind call with ace 10, 10 7 suited, deuce deuce, king queen off, and 9 7. Uh, yep, so that is, those are some ways that you can choose to filter for VPIP uh, and then how you can arrange the hands. You can also arrange it by facing pre flop action here. Uh, but those are different ways that I choose to look at VPIP and try to improve my game. What I would take away from this is overall, let's clear the filter here. Overall, in this one session this day, um, my overall VPIP was 1410. I need to get more active. And then so one of the things I can do is take a look at this hand, this session in its entirety. Just go by session here looking at these hands and um, I can take a look at all hands and go through whole cards take a look I'm sorry that's all my checking hands preflop action I'm looking at look at all the different folding hands here a lot of hands I folded of course go through the folds like why would I fold king eight suited why would I fold ace four suited with one limper and I'm in the cutoff hands like this it's something that I should not be folding maybe I was focused on other tables at the time didn't see it didn't want to be concerned with it but that's the kind of hand that I should be three bending with this guy is one very loose aggressive player and his open limp let's take a look at his limping limp calls most of the time but I'll be playing in position versus this rather weak player. So I should have raised, but I folded. Um, if I take a look here, yeah, I could have, I could have easily. This guy doesn't do a lot of three bets behind me. So yeah, I should have raised. And so it's hands like that that I want to notice that, hey, I'm not raising my ace four suited when it's limp to me. That's something I should, especially as I'm in the cutoff with one short stacked weak player behind me. And maybe that's why. Maybe I chose not to because, hey, this 11 BB, BB guy is going to shove. If I raise the three BBs, he can three bet steal on me, and I just got to give up with an ace four. don't have to, but I could choose to. Um, yeah, so maybe that's why I decided not to not to raise there. But I think overall that's a mistake as ace four suited is a profitable hand to play in position versus a limper. Yep. Well, that's how I do some VPIP research. Thank you very much for watching the video, and good luck at the tables, everybody.